English Year 8 Term 3B Creative Writing. Okay, welcome to Week 6, Lesson 1 of this scheme where we've been focusing now on non-fiction transactional writing and last week we were writing a speech, this week we're moving on to writing an article. The skills you'd use for both are entirely the same, the only difference is perhaps the way we open it, close it and the audience that we would have. So as always, to take your retrieval quiz for this lesson, there are a number of different ways you can do this. You can either click on the knowledge retrieval sheet icon at the bottom of the screen there. That will take you through a PowerPoint or PDF directly to it. Uh, you could, if you've printed this out or you're on a downloaded video, um, type in the address at the bottom of the screen there. Or if you're on YouTube, the easiest way it's just to click the link in the description there. There'll be five questions as always. One will be from previously, then number five will be from previously in the year. Um, and all the answers and information that you need will be on your knowledge retrieval sheet. You'll get instant feedback uh, and you'll also get this sent to your teachers so they can look at how well you're doing over this scheme. So as we move into article writing from speech writing, we're going to challenge to integrate a range of imagery devices to describe a scenario in an article. Now, imagery devices is what we were using in week one and two with descriptive and narrative writing. Those same skills are transferable to articles, and I'm going to show you how to do that in today's session. We're going to also aspire to embed sustained imagery to develop a scenario in an article. So what that means is a scenario being like a, a creating a, um, a future um, presentation of what life might be like or describing the scenario somebody's in so that we can further understand their situation. We're going to use imagery to do that so we can really get to grips with how that person's feeling and the argument that we're trying to make. And by embedding, we mean it's seamless. All the way through, it's hard even to notice that we're using these devices. We're not putting them in big flashing lights and saying, look, I've used personification. We're just using it as part of our natural everyday writing. And that's what makes it even more sophisticated. So I'll show you how to do that in this session today. So to start with, we'll play rate my paragraph. So a paragraph from a speech is going to appear on the screen. And what I want you to do is draw our judgment line, which we've used previously. So I want you to draw a line in your um, notebook or workbook uh, about four different lines for the four different uh, paragraphs that we'll read ineffective on the left effective on the right i want you to plot your x and label it with a reason why so why have you plotted it at ineffective why have you put it in the middle okay and i challenge you to label your x with more than one reason so can you come up with multiple explanations for your opinion the task is on the right hand side there, so write an article for a newspaper giving your views on homework in primary schools. So each of these paragraphs will be based on that task, just to give you a bit of context. So we'll move on to our first one, draw your line ready so that you can plot your X and label it with your ideas. So our first paragraph then, envisage this, you're a child and you've forgotten to do your homework. You feel nervous and scared of what will happen to you next. Do you want this to happen to a child? Okay, pause the recording, plot your X, give it a reason, and then press play when you finish, and we'll go over some ideas. Right then, so it begins well, doesn't it? Envisage this, and it's a great start because you're inviting the reader to imagine something, and then you're gonna then lay it out. Unfortunately, it's not very imaginative or descriptive. You're a child and you've forgotten to do your homework. Okay, it's telling us what to imagine, but there's no detail, no depth, no personification, metaphors, all those kind of things that we've been learning. Um, it does end with a rhetorical question. Do you want this to happen to a child? So it is a, a direct address with the word you. But I wouldn't say it's very effective. I think I'd be putting that about a quarter of the way along that line, because even though it has those elements, it doesn't do it very well. Okay, so the second one, you again want a line drawn ready to go for your X, or alternatively, you could just plot along the same line with a different color or, or number them. Envisage this, you slowly stagger into the classroom, sweat pouring down your little face like an incessant river of shame. The teacher glares at you with eyes of fury as she announces in a cold voice, homework boy. This same shame is felt by thousands of poor, innocent primary school children every single day. Pause the recording, plot your X and label it, and press play when you finish. 
So I think you'll agree this is better than the last one for the reasons that the other one we went through previously, that it, it wasn't detailed, there was no element of, of the features of, of, of description. Whereas this one, we have an incessant river of shame, that lovely simile. We've even got a little bit of speech in there, homework boy, which it really adds to it as well. Um, we've got some emotive language with poor and innocent. So because of all those reasons, I'd be saying this is effective. For me, I'm putting this on the right hand side, not quite as far as like the most effective thing I've ever read, but pretty close. I'd be putting that just before the Eve effective on my line. Um, but again, wherever you've judged it, that's fine. So long as you can back that up with your uh, justifications. Okay, final paragraph then. Envisage this, a neat row of robotic children marching through the school gates, handing over their homework like miniature business workers. Imagine a school where rainbow walls are repainted with dull grey letters, where chaotic screams of delight are traded for monosyllabic answers to tests. If we don't stop this homework epidemic, this could be our young children's dystopian future. So pause the recording, plot your X, give a reason or two, and then press play when you finish. So this one's definitely the most detailed, isn't it? It's the longest paragraph. And we have here the longest sentences as well, meaning that these are complex sentences and there's a lot more depth to them. Um, we've got the extended metaphor of, of the robotic monotone language, you know, gray, the word gray in this. We've got this imagery of dullness, the imagery of almost of, of machinery, haven't we? Which is very clever. Um, we've got the um, homework epidemics, we've got the imagery of disease as well. Um, and I like the fact that um, we've got uh, that word monosyllabic as well. All the word means all words are one uh, syllable long. So again, it, it reinforces this idea of it being very dull and very dreary. I would be putting this right at the end of my right hand side of effective. I think this is certainly the most effective of the ones we've uh, we've read and if yours looks anything like this fantastic but look what they've done all they've done is taken the same skills they learned that we learned in weeks one and two for descriptive writing and they've transferred it into this paragraph for an article that's what you want to be doing as well everything we're learning isn't just in isolation it's meant to feed in and dance with each other as part of the skills that you're learning together okay so here's a teacher from thorpe academy um, part of net and uh, Dr. Smale uh, says this, when you're writing a transactional piece, a letter, an article or a speech, remember that you can borrow skills and borrow content from other text types. So from um, your descriptive writing or narrative writing. For your envisage this paragraph for a letter, describe a scene in detail as if it's the picture from your descriptive writing. You can use the same imagery, metaphors, similes, up-level vocabulary, even transferable phrases. And this will really make your writing detailed and stand out. And he's absolutely right that if you want to um, make your writing even more detailed, use those same features and remember to, to borrow different phrases and words that you've been learning, your vocabulary matrix, because that will really help your writing stand out. Okay, so here again is that example we saw of what a good one looks like uh, with the neat robotic children. And what we've done here is color coded it with some success criteria. So what made this specifically uh, an interesting piece of writing? So we've got there seven different pieces of criteria, starting from the bottom, using the five senses to create empathy with the reader. So we've got screams of delight, which is a good one, rather than just what you can see. The orange used metaphors and similes, all the things we were using for descriptive writing, like miniature business workers, um, personal and inclusive pronouns. That's words like you and we, so direct address. If we don't stop this, it could be our children. Sophisticated vocabulary, we've got monosyllabic, obviously, dystopian. Um, developing description using at least four sentences. Well, this would obviously be doing this. In fact, this one, because the sentences are so long, I think we've actually only got three. But I'd imagine that this student would continue to write in the same vein. Using an extended metaphor, we already talked about this imagery of, of machinery, marching robotic grey. And finally, sophisticated ideas as well. So corrupt um, is a good one to use. So everything it's got in there um, makes this a really interesting and effective piece of writing. So we've rated some paragraphs, we're now going to develop some paragraphs. So a series of paragraphs will appear on the screen 
uh, that begin envisage this so that the the article is trying to cause us to imagine something but it needs developing it's not four to five sentences long like our um, success criteria says there um, in the blue box so I want you to develop them further with at least two more sentences so use a simile use personification use uh, the five senses and your challenge is to make sure you read through the previous sentences to see if you can bring in an extended metaphor has the writer already used something that you can bring um, through into your own couple of sentences so we'll move on to the first one So our first paragraph is, envisage this, you're taken into a prison cell, you're nervous about the other inmates, you miss your family, you can't sleep because of the dirt and muck. Not very detailed, it's kind of like that first example we read, so I want you to add that detail now. I want you to think of two sentences you could add to this. So you're in a prison cell, think about what you can see and hear, the five senses, use that success criteria on the left hand side of the screen to get you going and see what you can come up with. So pause the recording, spend about a couple of minutes writing out your sentences and then press play and we'll go over some potential ideas. Okay, so you should now have a couple more sentences describing the horrors of this prison cell. So for me, I think I would have gone with a, maybe a simile, maybe even start um, my sentence with the word like. So um, like, a, um, like a distraught um, animal, comma, you are encaged amongst bars of iron. So just trying to bring a bit more um, this imagery of being a, like a, a wild animal trapped uh, there. I might then use a short sentence. Um, chaos ensues. You know, two sent two word sentence would be quite nice there. Uh, I might even end with um, um, a bit more personal um, pronouns like the you can't sleep. But I might end it with a rhetorical question. So how can you ever uh, imagine uh, uh, life as it was again something like that would have been fine but there's so many different things you could have put in here particularly for your vocabulary I'd be wanting to use uh, from your uh, knowledge retrieval sheet some of those words which mean dull that would have been good monotonous wearisome that kind of thing okay so our second paragraph then envisage this young people fill the streets protesting angry voices can be heard all around people are injured and even killed do you want this to happen yeah, and it's very basic and i've got no problem with you if you think i'm going to rewrite the whole thing great just start with envisage this and rewrite it alternatively add in two extra sentences so pause the recording again spend about two minutes doing that use the success criteria on the left to help you and then press play when you finish Okay, so our scenario here is a protest. So really there's a lot of details we could have gone into. Maybe somebody throws a, a, some kind of missile or a firebomb through the street. Maybe I could have added the, the, the actual weather conditions, the darkness surrounding them, which could be a bit of pathetic fallacy. Um, I could even describe the police and their barricades and sweat pouring down their face as they nervously hold back the crowds. Anything like that would have been good. What we have here is just basic emotions. We want to be showing, not telling. Don't tell them you're scared. Show that the people are scared through gritted teeth and um, through um, their, their bodies shaking. Anything like that is much more effective than what we have in this example. So on to our third one then. Envisage this. You're a helpless baby lying on the floor. No one looks after you. You get used to not being cared for. Unfortunately, this is just one of 16,000 children in the UK today. Now, what I suggest for this one is that your two sentences come before that final sentence, because that's meant to be the kind of, when you realise, oh, this is the life of these poor children. So two extra sentences. Use a bit more emotive language in here, maybe a metaphor. Uh, pause the recording and then press play when you've written them. So as I said before, emotive language is what we're looking for here. Not you're a helpless baby, you're a poor innocent baby who's been carelessly left on the cold um, stained floor. You know, make, use your adjectives to make it even more um, poignant. Um, you might want to describe, you know, your, um, your um, innocent cries for help are drowned out by the shouts and screams of your parents in the 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 adjacent room the smash of glass and the smell of alcohol fills your lungs you know really go into detail of the deprivation here so that when we get to that final line this is just one of 16,000 children we think oh my word 
this is a huge problem that I need to, what I'm assuming is getting us to, to give money to charity. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for there. And our final paragraph. Envisage this, the crowd cheer for you. You're holding the winning trophy. Your family look at you proudly. This is the feeling of winning an Olympic medal. Again, we might want to put that last sentence um, after our next two sentences, but three minutes, I would say two, three minutes, write out your extra sentences and press play once you've finished. Okay, so again, not many adjectives in here. The crowd cheer for you. Well, how are they cheering? They're cheering, you know, triumphantly. They're cheering passionately. You know, what kind of crowd? The, the immense crowd, the plethora of people. You know, so we really want a lot more depth to this. We want a lot um, more interesting vocabulary in here. And I'd be using words from your retrieval sheet. You know, the synonyms for, for interested or beautiful. Mesmerizing would be great there. Um, so again, think carefully about every single word that you're using and make every word count. Okay, so I'm now going to live model for you um, how I would write an imagery paragraph and envisage this paragraph for a task. So I'm going to show you the kind of thoughts I'd go through and um, how I might structure it and what I might write. So I need to write an article to the local council giving my views on littering in my local area. So my voice, my character, I'm a mother, I'm forceful, but I'm also concerned. Now notice that I've taken on, I'm not myself anymore, I'm a character, and that allows me to be more passionate, forceful, and therefore more effective. My tone is I'm negative, obviously I'm not happy about this litter, but I'm slightly aggressive. Okay, so I'm really not happy about this this littering situation. So what am I going to write? Now it's an it's an article, so I need um uh, I need to start with a title. Um I'm not sure what I'd go with yet, but something probably with alliteration in is always nice. Litter um lit littering lunatics. I might put for that, you know, describing, um, that's quite aggressive, isn't it? Describing the people leaving litter. Uh, I then begin by outlining how uh, concerned I am about the littering in my local area. I'll talk about my children as well. I'll make it clear that I'm a mother, my poor innocent children, maybe some emotive language. And then in my envisage this paragraph, I'm going to describe the streets. Um, I'll describe them flowing with with garbage you know I'll, I'll really i'll maybe use the imagery of the sea or a river to to emphasize just how sort how awful this situation is so i'll have a go at structuring this and putting it together now okay so based on my ideas then this is what i've come up with i've gone with that title littering lunatics i've put an exclamation mark to make it more forceful again I've put 1.6 million. I've started with a, a large number and I'm withholding information. That same thing we use for narrative writing there. It's a narrative hook. I'm hooking you so you're thinking, well, what, what's that number there for? 1.6 million. That's how many metric tons of waste we as proud British citizens produced last month alone. As a mother, I certainly don't want my children wading through empty crisp packets and last night's kebab on their way to school. This garbage epidemic needs to end. So I've ended with like a shorter sentence there. I've made it very forceful. My children are wading through crisp packets like they're walking through the sea. Envisage this, the streets flowing incessantly with bones and discarded cans like a river of despair. Notice that I haven't just said, you know, it's in flowing incessantly with rubbish. I've been specific, bones and cans. Children, their trousers damp with grease, wade through the spluttering sewers to the refuge of their homes. Bit of sibilance there with spluttering sewers. Unfortunately, you don't need to imagine this. It's right outside your living room window. So like the other examples I've ended with, here's why I described it. This is the life of ev people every day. This is what certain people will experience. So I'm trying to show you what it's like for these people. And that's the effect and the power of a paragraph like this. Okay, so now you are going to have the chance to write your own envisage this paragraph for an article. So your article will be this. Teenagers are too impulsive and immature to be given the privilege to vote. Write an article for a magazine giving your views on the voting age being changed to 16. Now you might read that and think, I don't really care about that and it doesn't bother me. You might not be bothered, but your character cares. So be a character. Okay, you might be an older person who does not want to allow these rebellious teenagers to vote. They'll just vote for the, the person with the most YouTube hits. So, you know, you could be not yourself. You could be someone else. 
or if you are a teenager, maybe you're a teenager who goes out and, um, you know, is very interested in politics and knocks on people's doors, asking them to vote for the local um, party. So you could be a different type of person here. What I want you to do is write your own envisage paragraph. You can write your opening as well, which would be great. So start with a powerful opening like I did, and then you're envisage this paragraph. Maybe you're going to describe um, the world, the future, if we don't allow young people to vote. You know, maybe it's a really kind of dark dystopian world where nobody cares anymore. Ch teenagers are just sat playing video games, it, you know, or it could be describing a good scene. You know, it could be a, a perfect society where we allow everybody an equal vote. So it's a bit of a difficult task this, but I want you to start with some key ideas and use some of those phrases we use for descriptive writing there on the right hand side. His skin cracked and broken like forgotten pottery, chaos reigns, that sort of thing. And to help you out with your ideas, there's a couple of images there. You could describe teenagers on their way to vote. So we've got a row of neatly ordered teenagers, you know, all looking clean and fresh and happy with white smiles, you know, their, their pens in hand, ready to vote on their ballot boxes, all uh, nodding, agreeingly. You know, you could go down that positive route or you go on a negative maybe you'll describe what will happen if we don't allow teenagers to have a voice maybe it'd be some kind of riot you know look at the fire in that image look at the teenagers kind of wandering the streets aimlessly uh, the violence maybe the sound of sirens so go with whatever you think spend about 10 minutes on this pause the recording and press play when you finish so well done on your hard work I'm producing those two paragraphs. Hopefully you're proud of what you've produced. And the final thing for this session is to fill in our progress counters. So the progress counter I showed you previously for the example response, I want you now to note down any of the key criteria that you've achieved in today's session. So for example, starting from the bottom and working our way up, have you used the five senses? So you might have just written about what you can see, but have you mentioned any sounds, any smells, that sort of thing? If you have, write it down. Have you used metaphors and imagery? Have you used uh, personal pronouns, you, inclusive pronouns, we, to involve the reader? So you can write down the criteria you've met. You could even, if you've got different colored highlighters, highlight them and create a key. I don't mind how you do it, just note down the things you've used. And I also want you to identify one target for next time. Which of these did you not use? For example, I don't think many of us will have used an extended metaphor. Maybe that could be your target. Um, or perhaps vocabulary. You know you've used some, but there's some words in your retrieval sheet that you think I could be using that as well. So well done on everything you've done today. Excellent. It'll all feed into what we do in the next session on article writing.